a lot of us, we sit and we think that everything just have to happen so fast. No, you got to realize things, you know, as far as like with investments, you have to allow them to grow and they accumulate over time. And the reward basically is not immediate when you're looking at compound interest. The reward is not immediate. You, This is something that you have to allow to grow over time. Okay, so number two on my list, debt can be a double-edged sword. Yes, while debt, it can be a leverage um, for growth, for your growth. But such as like student loans, uh, mortgages, excessive and poor management debt, that can trap you in a cycle that is hard to escape. Y'all, and I'm not just talking, you know, just to be talking, I know this from experience. Um, a lot of us have, you know, probably attended some type of college or, or some type of educational institution where we had to take out student loans. And these student loans are things that can come back to haunt you in the future, in your future. Um, I remember with my mom, my mom begged me not to take out any student loan but you know me, I was following the crowd, wanting to do what everybody else was doing. And so I didn't take heed to what she was trying to tell me. So I took out a student loan, and which I really didn't need the student loan. Um, but I took the student loan out because I had a friend who told me, oh, yeah, when you get the money, we can go shopping and we can do this and we can do that. So I did it literally just for that reason. And it came back to haunt me. Um in my older years, it really came back to haunt me. So when it comes down to that, you know, yeah, stuff like that, it can really, really damage you in your future. That's number two. Okay, so number three on my list, living below your means should be non-negotiable. Yes, you know, it's tempting to upgrade um, your lifestyle when you're income grows, but financial stability and wealth accumulation, that comes from you being consistent, you, well, from you consistently spending less than you earn. And I know a lot of us have a problem with that. You know, as soon as we get that raise on the job or we get that little extra um, money from, you know, whatever, however, wherever we get it from, we tend to take it and we want to go and we want to splurge. You know, we want to upgrade on our homes. You know, we want to upgrade on, on our cars. You know, we want to, you know, go shopping at the mall. Not realizing that we can take that money and we can take it and invest it for our future. That's where accumulation, wealth accumulation comes from. You have to take and you have to invest for your future. Yes, so don't just go out and splurge with that extra income coming into the home or with that extra cash you're getting. Take that money and take it and invest it in your future. So that's number. Okay, so number four, number four is emergency funds are essential, not optional. They're essential and not optional. You know, life is very unpredictable. And without an emergency fund, a single unexpected expense can derail your whole financial progress. So you want to make sure that you have monies put aside for an emergency. We don't know what, you know, one day um, from the next is going to bring. So it's always good to have an emergency fund set aside for those emergency. You know, we, we anything can pop up. You know, you can have um, maybe one day you get a flat tire and you're going to need a new tire. You know, that tires are expensive these days. So that's when you can tap into your emergency. Okay, number five, investing fast can be very dangerous. What do I mean by that? chasing after those hot stocks or trends um, often leads to losers, basically, because it's like gambling. It's better to stick with 
a diversified long-term investment strategy than chasing after the next thing, smoking when it comes to um, those fads, you know, we and, and we've all probably experienced that. I know myself, I had a share of them that I chased myself. You know, um, a lot of them, people consider them as pyramid schemes. You know, you have to stop chasing after these um, fads when people come out to you and wanting you and telling you, oh, get rich schemes. That's what I call them. Get rich schemes. We have to stop chasing after these get rich schemes and we have to strategize and come up with something that's going to be more like a long-term investment. That is okay, so number six is financial independence requires sacrifice. Yes. It requires sacrifice, you guys. So building wealth often means um, making tough choices like foregoing short-term um, pledges for long-term security. What do I mean by that? You know, we tend to want to take our money and just spend it, waste it on things that are just a short-term pleasure. You know, like taking that vacation that you probably can't afford. That's a short-term pleasure. You're risking um, short-term pleasures for long-term security. So things that you know you don't have to do and and um, it's like a short-term pleasure when you know you're trying to, uh, uh, um, you're trying, what, what's the word I'm use, I wanna use? You're trying to achieve, you know, a financial goal, um, independence with your wealth, you have goals, financial goals that you're trying to achieve. So you have to stop with these short-term pleasures that are um, stopping you with your long-term investments. Okay, number seven, inflation can erode your savings. Yes. So keeping money in a low entrance savings account, it just isn't enough. It's not enough these days. Um, inflation can significantly reduce purchasing power over time. So making investing very crucial to you. So we have to stop and monitor our you know, where do we have our money saved? What type of um, interest we're getting back from our monies that we have put it, set aside? And I must tell you, um, and I don't have anything against banks, but when you put your money in a banking account, in a savings account, and you're trying to accumulate wealth, um, that's it's not going to happen. It's, it's not going to happen. The savings account is not designed for that. A savings account is not designed for you to build any generational wealth because of the low interest rate that you get on your monies that are sitting in that savings account. You need to take your money and put it in an investment where you're going to you're going to really see your money grow over inflation. You don't want to have your money sitting somewhere where inflation is rising higher than whatever um you're earning that's defeating the purpose. You will never get ahead. You will always live in poverty because your money is not growing more than the inflation is growing. So you want to always keep your money in um, in a savings account or in, in, in account, even in investing where your money is growing more than inflation. I can definitely help you with that. That is one of the things that I do. I show people how they can um, build generational wealth, build generational wealth. So if you contact me, you can inbox me. I can definitely show you how you can take your money from that savings account because it's not doing any good just sitting in that savings account if you're trying to build some generational wealth. Okay, so number eight. Number eight is your career is your most valuable asset. Yes, your career is your most valuable asset. Um, investing in your skills and career early on um, can have the biggest return on your investment. Um, this often means 
continuing education, networking, or seeking out opportunities for growth. You have to seek out the opportunities to help you grow with whatever type of career you decide to um, choose. You're going to have to invest in your, your skills, invest in your career. You have to invest in it in order for it to continue to grow into what it what you need it to be in order for you to um you know be successful with it in the future so your career is your most valuable asset so invest in that okay number nine which is near and dear to my heart um insurance is a must have not a luxury insurance is a must have and not a luxury um, insurance, when it comes to health insurance, when it comes to life insurance, when it comes to disability insurance, this is crucial to protect you against any um, kind of um, financial loss. You know, it could be it could be devastating for you to have something that comes up. You know, with your health. Um, with you getting injured, um, or even death. Yeah, this could be devastating for the family if you don't have health insurance, if you don't have life insurance, if you don't have disability insurance. You have to invest in these things. This is one way a lot of people, they find themselves in this big, giant black hole because one thing happened where they either got hurt hurt or um, they had a death in the family and nobody had insurance on the loved one. Yeah, that's my, that, that, that is, that's what I do. That's what I do in case you guys didn't know. But I tell people all the time, it's better to need the insurance. I mean, have the insurance and not need it than to need it and not have it. It's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So I don't want um, you to say, and, and, and there are selfish people in the world. I've spoke to so many selfish people who say, oh, well, I don't worry about life insurance because I'll be dead anyway. How selfish is that? Why would you want to leave that burden back on your loved ones? Why would you want to leave that embarrassment back on your loved ones? That is so selfish because I, and I know from experience because I've experienced this twice in my lifetime, you know, the embarrassment of having to, um, gather the family together around the kitchen table and we sit and discuss how we're going to pay for our loved one to get, you know, for, for their final expenses. That's very embarrassing and it's very devastating. And especially when you have to go to GoFundMe and reach out to other people, people you don't know to help you um, lay your loved one to rest. That's embarrassing. That is, so that's why I tell you guys to reach out to me and let me help you with that. That's what I do. And insurance is not as expensive as what you think it is. You know, I tell people too, you can pay a little bit now or you can pay a whole lot later. The choice is yours because I promise you these days and times, the um the funeral homes they're not playing you have to come with something showing where you're going to be able to take care of this bill um when you know before they even attempt to even provide you any services so you have to eat if you don't have insurance they're going to at least have you to pay at least half of it and so when we talk about half we're talking about thousands of dollars that you have to come up with within um, within a week's time, you know, within seven days. So don't leave that embarrassment back on your loved ones and don't allow the loved ones to leave it back on you. I can help you with that. Um, I can show you how insurance is very inexpensive. So contact me. Um, and last but not least, number 10, you can't rely on others for your financial security. No, you can't, rely, you can't rely on others, you guys. And you definitely can't rely on the government right now. You know, with pensions and social securities, um, it may not be enough. 
It may not be enough. Think about it. If you are sitting now and you're barely paying your bills, what's going to happen when you retire? You know, what's going to happen when you retire? Because you're not going to get all the money that you're making now once you retire. If you can't make it now, you definitely won't be able to make it once you retire. You're going to have to have something in place. Um, planning for retirement independently ensures that um, you won't have to rely on external factors for your financial um, security or your financial well-being. So go ahead and start planning now. I can definitely help you with that also. I can help you so you will be able to retire and retire comfortably. And you don't have to worry about um, going back to work because either you ran out of money or you're running out of money and you are forced to go back into the workplace. I can definitely help you with that too. So I ask that you, you all, um, contact me. I